Giving wings to HBCU, student streams HBCUtravels.com awaits. Hello folks, I'm Jerry Ellis of Ellis Lopez Travel. We at Ellis Lopez Travel provide a comprehensive suite of travel products and services, along with local premium ground transportation here in the Washington DC metropolitan area. We at Ellis Lopez Travel are dedicated to leverage our enterprise to nurture the creation of generational prosperity in our communities. To this end, we have entered a great partnership with Dr. Dennis Rogers of HBCU Graduation Trips to leverage the travel industry niche as a community prosperity driver. Dr. Dennis Rogers has been directing HBCU student travel overseas since 2005. He's also a professor and has taught at several HBCUs. He has an increased focus on the HBCU graduation experience. Having a global experience is so essential for our next generation of leaders. Lean in and listen to the value opportunity this partnership presents. Welcome, Dr. Rogers. How are you today? Greetings. I am well. It's a pleasure to be here with you. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm excited about this partnership, and I think it will uh, do a world of good out there. And uh, I just want you to share um, a little bit of history of HBCU graduation trips. Uh, how did it start, and and um, what is your outlook for the future? Thank you for doing that. Well, um, <laughs> there's the phone ringing in, someone calling for good news. Uh, I started the Student Leadership Development, uh, LLC, years ago to really service our college students who are our future leaders. And in the process of taking students abroad internationally, I saw their, you know, the lights kind of open up in their, in their minds. We've even had some students to travel abroad and decide to pursue higher education abroad. One student in particular obtained her PhD at a university in London. So when the um, HBCUgradtrips.com, we launched the site, we did so with the intention of providing students with a graduation experience like no other. There are quite a few students who walk the stage, who get their diploma, who you know throw their cap in the air, but there are fewer students who after graduation calms down, actually board a flight and have an opportunity to go abroad and to see the world in the spirit of the grand tours that people used to take when they graduated from college in years past. So we founded this opportunity specifically to provide graduating students the, um, the, the, the opportunity once again to go abroad, to see the world, and to think beyond the glass ceiling that an American education may have a tendency to put upon students' thinking. That's great. So Dr. Rogers, you know that I have agreed to give 10% of my net profit to support the HBCU graduation trips. Um, that can be in the form of stipends or helping students pay uh, for, the, for their trip. What would a parent say if their student had a $500 stipend uh, while they're on, on the trip? Would that be helpful? <laughs> well, yeah, that's fantastic. First of all, I want to thank you, and I see your your flag in the background. I want to thank you for your military service, for service in our nation. And thank you for this partnership with our students. We really appreciate it. Um, from a student's perspective and a parent's perspective, for a student to receive a $100 scholarship, let alone a $500 scholarship, really is fantastic. As students travel abroad, we know that there's a pyramid. Some students are well-funded at the top of the pyramid. There are students in the middle whose funding may be a bit spotty. And then at the base of the pyramid, there may be quite a few students who are eking out in existence. That's why there's so many student loans taken out, et cetera. So to relieve some of that pressure and provide students with a $500 scholarship, it allows students to to buy gifts for their parents while abroad. It allows students to have a wonderful, you know, dining experience while abroad. It allows students to really invest in their continued education 
after their undergraduate experience. So a $500 scholarship would be an amazing thing for any student to receive, let alone a student who's traveling abroad. Thank you so much. Awesome, you're welcome. So could I ask you, how? what's the average cost of, of these trips? If a student wanted to go to Senegal, or you have a group of students going to Senegal in 2023, what would be the cost of a trip like that? I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. I want to give you both the median cost, $2,300 for an international experience with us. And then I want to give you the range. The range goes from uh, four thirty-three dollars or $4,300 all the way down to $600 or $599. And so the $599 is a cruise, which many people are taking cruises, maybe even some students. But if you can imagine graduating, being on a cruise with fellow graduates, with the level of energy and anticipation for the future, that's an amazing cruise to be on for only six, you know, hundred dollars. And then to go all the way across the world to actually live or to be in a country for 10 days at a rate of $4,300, that's quite reasonable also. To have a, an African experience, where they're breaking bread, they're sitting, they're communicating with uh, students on the continent of Africa in Senegal is literally priceless. But for us to offer it at a $2,300 a price point is amazing, simply amazing. So we're working with great tour operators and uh, with partnerships like the one we have with your company, we can provide some scholarships to students that allow them to take a trip that erstwhile they may not have been able to have taken at all. Awesome, yeah. That that's a great that's a great price. Uh, I'd like Thank to uh, reiterate my uh, giving that ten percent from a profit. It comes from booking travel on hbcutravels.com, which we're about to launch. So I think the future looks bright. Uh, what would you say to HBCU alumni? and other people that support HBCUs, if they have an opportunity to book travel on one site and don't help students versus HBCU travel, <laughs> uh, what would you say to them? What would you say to them That's about right. the choice? I would ask them two questions. The first question would be, hey, do you travel? If you do, go to hbcutravels.com and book your next hotel, book your next flight. Because when you do so, a portion of the proceeds will go back to HBCU students. We can earmark it, target it toward your alma mater or target it toward students in general. But the question is, do you travel? And if so, this is quite easy to do. The second question would be, do you remember when you were a student? <laughs> if you remember when you were a student, how important was it for you to receive that package from home, to receive a scholarship, to receive a, a meal, to even be a student leader and for them to have a reception on campus and you would sit and have a fine dining experience on really meager student earnings? Well, that's what this type of booking allows us to help provide students with. When you book with hbcutravels.com, what it allows us to do is to actually provide funding to students who can have a fine dining experience, who can make it over the hump when it comes to graduating. Because we know at some universities, you know, at the end, students do all of the academic work, but they're just a few dollars short. And a scholarship of funding makes all the difference in the world for them to graduate. Do you travel and do you remember when you were a student? If you answer yes to one or both of these questions, you should be using hbcutravels.com. Great. Uh, thank you for, for that answer. And that, that underscores my uh, ability in giving. Mm -hmm. As you know, the more people that book travel, it means the more that I'm able to give. So I, I think we should really think about that. Um, it's not about me, it, it's about the students. And that's what we that's want right. to do. We want to build up leaders 
that can lead this country, lead the world, uh, maybe even lead, you know, other planets. But <laughs> that's what it's going in, going into outer space, <laughs> planning, planning the flag of the Divine Nine or one of those wonderful organizations right. on the moon. Or, right. you know, I understand there is an African American woman who's going to go on the moon soon. So it'll be interesting to see which flag she plants, right? That's great. <laughs> um, That's great. We have an opportunity really to support our students in a way that um, organizations have been doing for years, but none quite as easily as we can today. Because with the click of a button, you can literally put funds back into uh, students yeah. and students' education without going above and beyond what you would normally pay for travel anyway. You're paying for travel. Why not pay for travel in a way that puts money back into our HBCUs and into our students? Yes. You mentioned uh, the fraternities. Uh, periodically, as you know, uh, I have benevolent offerings for the uh, fraternities and sororities on HBCU campuses. I know a lot of them have uh, scholarship funds for books, mm -hmm. have scholarship funds to pay off student balances. They have scholarship funds uh, for dormitory fees. So I'm gonna be keeping an eye on that throughout the year because that's that's very important. You know, the giving should continue, not just with the booking travel, but in other ways. So, I think absolutely, and and you know, I just had an amazing, <clears throat> I just had an amazing conversation today, actually, with a, a fraternity member, and the discussion was around um, fraternity houses for our Divine Nine organizations. You go to any of our universities, HBCUs and non HBCUs, and the question arises, you know, where are the fraternity houses for our organizations? So ideally, we can grow this, and and through more travel we can begin to put some funds into uh, helping, assisting with the purchase of such so that future generations of Divine Nine organization members will have an opportunity to actually be in a safe, secure, comfortable housing with their fellow sorority and fraternity members. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rogers. Um, you are always a breath of knowledge. Um, it's just amazing to talk to someone like you that have been, I mean, for years, 20, 25 years, you, you've seen so many students uh, graduate and be successful, probably thousands. Um, and, and I know that. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and at any given graduation, you know, it's a beautiful thing to see our students graduate. I know I was looking at North Carolina and State Universities graduation last year and they graduated 3,000 students. And so when you say you see thousands, yes, if we tune in, our students are graduating, how can we help make their graduation experience phenomenal and their experience beyond graduation even more phenomenal? And I think it's with the help of professionals like yourself who make a conscious decision to create avenues for our students to benefit from and again, we want to thank you there, Ellis uh, Tra Travel, for doing that. And Ellis Lopez Travel for making this possible. Thank you. And as you know, I'm not going to stop until it's done. <laughs> until it's done. That's right. Thank you so much. And uh, you have a wonderful evening. We'll talk again soon. You too. Be All blessed, right. everyone. HBCUtravels.com awaits. Where can we take you?